Hey everyone, with uh, a kidnapping out, we're going to start going over her stats and details. So yeah, this is somewhat the beginning of the new part of the swimsuit event or the summer event. The event itself doesn't come out for another three days. And then I would assume a bunch of other stuff comes out then. For now, it's just we only have her banner here, which does come with a free multi, not to mention tickets. So I went ahead and did the free multi off camera. I recorded it. On my phone because I, I was gonna upload it as a short just in case I got anything uh, but it was a dead multi so I was like eh, I'm not really gonna upload it uh, I do kind of wish I saved it for the video but like if I did pull something I would have wanted it to be a short so I don't know either way uh, getting into Echidna obviously she's gonna be purple uh, there was Christmas Echidna who was actually red uh, but you know for the most part they like giving characters colors that like matches uh i don't know their personalities or how you think they would like like looking at the character you would say oh that character is this color it's kind of just like how they do things i don't know how to describe it but yeah she's she's always gonna be purple for the most part uh she is indeed a festival so uh she has the other swimsuits as her featured characters while she's the main festival so that's pretty interesting i like how they're giving us more cracks at the previous years swimsuit characters uh you can make an argument for you know i want newer characters but also like these characters for the most part are rare and they don't come back too often when they do come back it's usually uh side by side with another great banner so it's like hard to make decisions so I, overall like i'm glad that they're coming back more often especially for like the later iteration iterations of the same event like part like uh basically the second year um it's like previous anniversary characters showing up on the next anniversary banner kind of like that uh previous years summer units are coming back the next year summer banners i like that very much so finally without further ado let's talk about the unit herself again she's a festival she she so she's gonna have the four skills she's got a leader skill it's gonna be 15 percent agility for purple allies uh this used to be one of the most coveted uh, later skills in the game when she first originally got it on her first festival, but they've been slowly upgrading it and uh, giving it to more characters, so that's pretty neat. Then her bonus stats are going to be 10% uh, HP, 10% agility, and 30% attack. She looks a little more defensive uh, support, so we'll have to see, or uh, offensive support, so we'll see. Her basic, did you get charmed by me? Is 600% magic attack on one enemy, 100% chance to convert two buffs into debuffs. Oh, what? Ooh, okay. That's interesting. This skill damage scales with lower remaining HP and pierces invincibility. Ooh. Don't like I don't like things in any game that involve lowering your HP because it's way too conditional. Um most games don't have viable ways of lowering your HP without just like putting you in immediate danger. So don't like that at all. She pierces invincibility. That doesn't um, matter with the HP. So that's pretty good. And then the convert two buffs into debuffs. That's really interesting. I like that a lot. It looks, it sounds like it's just random. So that could be really fun. Uh, that could like either ruin or not ruin it, but it, it could either be super useless or just completely, uh, make the game for you in a situation so that's pretty interesting uh, then we have her passive it's gonna be like a young lady with her own pace uh, on battle start give self one turn of incorporal uh, incorporal or incorporeal no it's incorporal uh, incorporal is gonna be a debuff we're gonna talk about here incorporal a new unit with this effect can completely avoid normal attacks and skill effects except from other characters that also that are are that are also incorporal so it's kind of like a buff but it's like a it's like a it's like a passive basically so if you have an incorporal unit they could fight off of their incorporals but right now she's the only one in the game so she literally if so basically skills to her whenever she gets hit are, are just numbers so let's say um we are taking a look at the basic so if the basic pierces to invincibility and you know changes the debuffs theoretically if this skill was on a normal unit and she got hit by it it would basically only be magic attack 600 percent that's it that's all shit that would affect her so that's 
really strong. <laughs> uh, kind of, she's probably the best skin in the game now, just solely because of that. If, uh, if it always procs. Either way, self one turn of a corporal. So that's the one turn. Purple allies are permanently immune to hunger, misfortune, frenzy, silence. Okay. When an ally is defeated, purple allies accept self, get one turn of a corporal, and apply retroactive to self. Okay, so retroactive is the one that restarts your battle. Um, I remember now. Re somebody explained of what reincarnation was, so thank you to that person. Um, so everyone gets a corporal instead, instead of you. Uh, when someone dies, uh, then you get it at the start of battle. So yeah, they're they're very sparing with it. It looks like in the passive. I don't. I can't tell for the rest of the kit. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, for the just of the passive, it's not too crazy. She's not too overpowered. Uh, but it is relatively strong. Uh, let's take a look at the skill two or skill one. No, I think it, uh, <laughs> I felt a sneeze coming on. I didn't want to sneeze in the mic. All right, this one's called Let's Play in the Water. Sacrifice, ooh, okay. Sacrifice 20% of all allies, H ooh, all allies, okay. All allies, HP, and fizz, fizz attack? Oh, and physically attack, <laughs> confused there. All enemies, 3x with 600% power, with 100% chance to convert one buff into debuff. All purple allies gain one turn, one turn in corporal. This skill damage scales with lower remaining HP, it cannot be used with without enough HP. So kind of like Festival Raws, uh, where you can't kill yourself with the skill. If you don't have enough HP, then it's just not gonna allow you to use it. Um, so the way in Corporal works, either this could be uh, her being the best unit in the game, or she's just very interesting and brings something new. So the way I'm interpreting is, in Corporal, it's just another buff, and you can only touch people with that buff when you have the same buff. So let's say you're going against a an, with an echidna while you have your own echidna. Um, you can both give your team in corporal. So now the the entirety of the field, both teams have in corporal as a buff. That means I would assume everyone can attack everyone and it's not overpowered. So that makes way more sense. Uh, I thought it was kind of like a tag on a unit um, to where it's basically like category units if you've ever played Dokkan. Like that category cannot touch, be touched by any unit of the game, which is, it sounds ridiculous now that I think about it, uh, that I thought that. But either way, so it's a buff that you apply. And if your enemy cannot apply that buff to themselves, then they basically can't touch you. Uh, they are going to do damage. Like the damage multipliers are there. It's just the, the debuffs, the buffs, the stealing, the peeling, uh, anything that they do. Uh, cooldown increasing, cooldown decreasing, anything like that, they just can't apply it to you. Action gauge increasing, action gauge decreasing, they just can't apply it to you, but they can still hurt you. And that's pretty much it. So that's pretty, like, Echidna is insane if you're going up against no Echidna. But if it's Echidna, Echidna, it's kind of whatever, same field. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of like where you kind of need her. We'll have to wait and see how oppressive she is. But she sounds pretty oppressive. Um, so yeah, either way, other than let's take a look at the other aspects. So it's just in Corporal, uh, the one buff into debuff, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, so it's not, nothing too crazy. This is where she allows herself to lose HP. So there's that reliable source of losing HP, which I don't mind. Um, just because you can't kill yourself with it, you just have to be very protective. Um, we'll have to see, I don't know if there's any purple units out there. I know there's uh, Valentine's Julius that can, like, he's kind of like a purple tank. Um, but yeah, you really don't want her getting touched. As long as she's not getting touched, she can reliably reduce her own HP whenever she wants and just keep that going. If she can keep that going, then it's pretty dangerous. Um, so yeah, we'll take a look. Oh, was that this skill? Pretty sure it was. Yeah. All right, so now we'll take a look at the field skill. Um, Waking Dream, convert two buffs into debuffs for all enemies for, and non-purple allies. Oh, so you really want purple allies. Apply three turns of buff seal, ignoring resistances. Also, okay, so for the field skill, real quick. Uh, this is what I've kind of always wanted. Uh, it affects you as well, but you can kind of build around it to where it doesn't. This is what I've always, always wanted out of a field skill. I want it to affect both players 
but you, since you control the field skill, have the opportunity to build around it and not have it affect you. So by doing that, which is building a mono purple team, it won't affect you at all. But if you use any other units besides purple, uh, it will change two buffs into debuffs. See, that's what I really like. This is like how I want all field skills to be. To be. Um, but yeah, then apply three turns of buff seal, ignoring resistances. Purple allies gain one turn of a corporal. Apply field granting to each unit three turns of attack up and defense down. Oh, so it's just like go, go, go. I like that as well. Uh, the purple allies, there's a lot of ways to get in corporal from this unit, which is really good. She, um, she only ever does one turn on every single skill, but every single skill has the ability to proc it. So that's pretty good. Except for the first one, um, for basic, but still pretty good. Uh, I very much have like the design. It, it feels like they're learning from their mistakes. Not only is the field skill betterly designed, uh, she's oppressive, but like they're balancing it to an extent where everything she gives and corporal with is only one turn, but there's plenty of ways to do it. Um, it feels like they really thought about her kit. I really, really respect that and enjoy that. So I really do like this unit. I think she's pretty sick. Make sure you're waiting for those free tickets. Don't know how to get them. I would assume they're gonna come with the event, but try not to waste too many gems here because we do have uh, three whole other units coming out, Cruz, Priscilla, and Anastasia. I, I think that's it. Um, as well as Anniversary. Don't let this bait you. We have so many characters coming out, plus Anniversary also. Oh, and Felt, and Felt. I almost forgot Felt. Don't, don't say shit in the comments. I I, I remembered her. Um, we, yeah, so we have the, the four of them coming out after Echidna. Then we have a guaranteed ticket as well, which Echidna is not going to be part of. Just don't summon uh, <laughs> because Anniversary. I know it's going to be insane. Um, she does look really good here. I love the art. I don't know. I keep wanting to do the tier list, but I keep pushing it back because so much great art is coming out. I'm going to do it before anniversary and then maybe right after. Um, but I know for sure right before anniversary. Um, but yeah, go look on your pools. Those are the stats. I think she's great. Oh, let's take a look at her memory. I, I always forget. So HP, I would assume I would assume this is HP and what is this attack? I'm just purely guessing. All right, let's see. Let's translate it real quick. I'm assuming it's going to be a witch category as well. It was a physical attack category. Yeah, so HP and attack. Um, HP is going to be 16%. That's 32, 32. Oh, great stats. Is that 32? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's 32. Maybe my math is off. Um, then we have two passives. Let's take a look at that. The cool time increase will be activated for yourself for three turns to start a battle. So for the first three turns, you can't have your cooldowns increased. Uh, when your HP drops below 50%, you will be attacked. Uh, emit an action gauge of 200% increase. Holy shit. Um, so if your HP drops below 50%, which is really easy to drop her HP below 50%, but you want to be careful because if she gets attacked, I mean, I guess you want incorporal on yourself, and then you let yourself get attacked. That's one thing, too. If you're going up against someone who doesn't have an echidna, you can actually just, like, have free reign on getting hit because they're they're only doing so much damage to you. Like, they're not procking any debuffs. They're not stealing anything from you. Like, it's just pure damage. So it could be kind of, like, okay to do. Um, but, yeah, pretty solid memory. I'd say it's a good good one to have on her. Uh, that's gonna do it for the video i'll see you guys next time good luck in your pools stay strong don't pull <laughs> maybe don't pull uh but yeah later